Billionaire Tom Steyer. 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 <laughs> there are some names I just am never going to get. Um, he's running for president. He announced this week after saying that months ago that he wasn't going to run for president. Now, there's a rumor going around that a lot of uh, his waffling on this had to do with his marriage. I have no idea if that's true or not, but that's the rumor that's going around. Um, but he is running, and here's his launch ad. Let's take a look, and then we'll discuss. Tom Steyer, one of the most influential activists in Democratic Party politics. He's the founder and president of Next Gen America. I think what people believe is that the system has left them. I think people believe that the corporations have bought the democracy, that the politicians don't care about or respect them, don't put them first, are not working for them, but are actually working for the people who have rigged the system. Really what we're doing is trying to make democracy work by pushing power down to the people. California voters are getting a chance to do what California lawmakers failed to do. Prop 56 got a lot of support at the polls. The oil company sponsored a new ballot initiative to halt California's new law. I was born in 1957. I grew up right in the middle of the Civil Rights Revolution and the Vietnam War. The underlying injustice in America was coming under attack. My father graduated from Yale Law School at 21, started being a lawyer, then he went into the Navy because of Pearl Harbor. And then at the end of the war, they sent him over to be assistant to the chief prosecutor at Nuremberg. I think my father looked at being in the service or being at Nuremberg as like, you have your duty, you do it. My parents were very uncompromising about doing the right thing. Steyer and his wife are worth an estimated billion and a half dollars. They've pledged to give half of their fortune to charity. We signed the giving pledge, which is a promise to give away half of your wealth while you're alive to good causes. We have a society that's very unequal, and it's really important for people to understand that this society is connected. If this is a banana republic with a few very, very rich people and everybody else living in misery, that's a failure. The lawyers have basically gotten the Supreme Court to say that corporations are people, and therefore they have all the rights in the Constitution given to people. Now, obviously, corporations don't have hearts or souls or futures. They don't have children. They have a short time frame, and they really care about just making money. If you give them the unlimited ability to participate in politics, it will skew everything because they only care about profits. You know, you look at climate change. That is people who are saying, we'd rather make money than save the world. That's an amazing statement, and it's happening today. And there are politicians supporting that. I mean, I think 82,000 people died last year of drug overdoses. If you think about the drug companies, the banks, screwing people on their mortgages, it's thousands of people doing what they're paid to do. Almost every single major intractable problem at the back of it, you see a big money interest for whom stopping progress, stopping justice is really important to their bottom line. Americans are deeply disappointed and hurt by the way they're treated, but what they think is the power elite in Washington, D.C., and that goes across party lines and it goes across geography. We've got to take the corporate control out of our politics. All these issues go away when you take away the paid opposition from corporations who make trillions of extra dollars by controlling our political system. What do we care about? We care about proving the world and handing it on to the next generation in a way so that they can lead better lives than we've had, in a way that's safer, more prosperous, and more beautiful and creative. And if we don't do those two things, then shame on us. If you think that there's something absolutely critical, try as hard as you can and let the chips fall where they may. And that's exactly what I'm doing. My name's Tom Starr. I'm running for president. You know, it should really bother everybody that the only reason he's even allowed to be in the conversation at this high level is because he's a billionaire. That's it. And in in the society that we live in, it's like if you are, you could be a brilliant person and have all these amazing and unique policy solutions, 
But if you don't have the money to get that word out there, then you have no chance of running. You know, Jeff or or Barbara from Minnesota might be that brilliant person who's focused on policy and is whip smart and knows how to get stuff done politically. Um, and they can't, they don't get like a, a bunch of news coverage when they announce that they're running. The only reason Tom Steyer does is because he's a billionaire. That should really annoy everybody because it's like simply by virtue of the fact that he's got a lot of money, he like leapfrogs almost everybody and is everybody's like, ooh, he's serious because he has money. That says nothing about your political ideology. Okay, now let's go through this. Go back and watch that ad again. You'll notice he didn't mention a single policy. Now, he was doing like the... the fake populism thing, so his instincts aren't terrible in terms of how to run for office, but you go back and you listen again, he didn't mention a single policy. Now, why? Why would he do that? Why is this something that we see over and over with many of these candidates when they launch their campaigns? The answer is very simple, deceptively simple. If you don't make specific promises, then people can't get mad at you and you don't deliver on them. So if, if Tom Steyer were to become president and not get Medicare for all, not get free college, not get a living wage, not legalize marijuana, well, he could turn around and be like, I never said I was going to do those specific things. I, in my launch video, I was talking about uh, incredibly vague things like uh, corporate power is bad and we need to give our government back to the people. And now that I give specifics on exactly how I want to do that, nope. There's a reason why they leave out the specifics. What they want you to do is hear the stuff he's saying, like the populist tone and the populist rhetoric that he's hitting here. And they want you to go, oh, he's going to fight for me. But if he says, like, corporate money's the problem, and then he doesn't tell you what he wants to do to get that money out, then he's just listening to himself talk. He's saying nothing. And that's what it is. He's saying nothing. <laughs> so even though he, he's smart enough to know he's got to sound kind of populist, He's not bringing up specific policies, presumably because he doesn't really believe in them and he's not going to fight for them. Uh, now, by the way, this is a guy who also worked at Goldman Sachs for a few years in the 80s. He's a hedge fund manager. Um, and the reason why he's made like a little bit of a public profile for himself within the past year or so is that his main issue is impeachment. That's what he's fighting on. That's... Um, that's how he's gotten his name in the news. He's taken this issue of impeachment and he's been like the lead proponent of it. He's literally lit millions of dollars on fire running TV ads saying we should impeach Donald Trump. Of course, nothing's come about from that. And even if they did try to impeach, uh, Trump would end up beating it and then it would be a bump for him. So it's politically dense. Um, but like, this is why he's even in the conversation is because he's led on that issue of impeachment and tried to, like, force his face on TV through that issue of impeachment. And listen, if you ask me, I'll be honest with you guys, man. That was all a calculated strategy. Like, I don't even know if he really believes in impeachment because that was the only reason we're talking about him is because he's a billionaire and because he's been in the news over the past year because he's putting front and center this issue of impeachment. So he's getting coverage in mainstream media and it. What I think happened is he used that as his vehicle to get some national recognition when it comes to politics, and then that's his launching pad. So it may have been a cynical plot from the very beginning of like, the, I'm, I'm going to run for president. If I'm going to run for president, I got to get my name out there quite a bit, and here's how I could do that. I'll lead on impeachment. I got a lot of money, and I'll burn millions of dollars running ads on impeachment, so here I am. So... You know, this is one of those issues where it's like the most cynical, skeptical, gloomy version you have of what Tom Steyer might be. That could be what he is. And that's just sad. Um, and then the final thing is, why are you in a barn? <laughs> You're a billionaire. You're recording your launch from a barn? That goofy ass music in the background and the calm talking and and um you know telling you his personal story how many times have we seen politicians like this man i go back to what bernie said in the debate 
He's like, you've had a lot of politicians come up over these past few decades saying a lot of pretty things that everybody wants to hear, and then nothing changes. Ask yourself why that is. That's right. We need somebody who's fundamentally promising tangible reform of the system and who's going to take on those powerful interests. That for damn sure is not Tom Steyer.